I'm starting this build with some 3D prints. So I found this um, Instructables online and it's from Kyle Gilbert. I think he's also in the Room Builders group. And I want to thank you, Kyle, for these files. I printed out most of the parts that I needed for my Millennium Falcon cockpit dashboard. So that's where I started out. Then I used some cardboard to mock up the cockpit and the form of the dashboard. And then used this cardboard template to make the dashboard out of wood. This bottom part works like a hinge so I can store my computer underneath and also use the other side for more storage. I'm using this idea from Whitey's Wicked Workshop and instead of painting the dashboard, I'm using drawer liner to cover the dashboard and I'm sticking it together with contact cement. I'm using the paper as a barrier so it won't stick to the parts that I don't want to stick so I can go and work myself up from the bottom to the top and sticking the liner onto the wood. And in the bottom part, the liner also reinforces the hinge part. I marked here with a grease pencil where my parts will go so I can have a reference. And it'll be easier when I start sticking my parts to it. I also started with the TV surround. I used an IKEA wood shelf and cut it to size and then I made a column for that side all the way to the ceiling. And sorry for the lost footage, I don't have how I built that column, but it's pretty basic, just two sides and the front portions and it's open in the back, it has some support material which I attached to the wall. Now I'm building a shelf to span that space between the wall and the column that I built so I can put some of my collectibles in there. I made a front frame so I can put some greeblies and maybe screens and I have a couple ideas for that. And then with EVA foam, I made some Millennium Falcon style pads to decorate the front of the column. Ooh. 
I then started preparing the 3D printed parts by sanding them, putting some primer on them, and painting them with different types of metallics and black paint. I use rugged texture paint for the viewfinder to make it look more rubberized. For the lever console, I drew out a template out of paper. Then I cut out the pieces using that template and put it all together. I cut out the holes for the levers, sanded it, and then cover it also with the same drawer liner. It's just like wrapping a present. I gave it extra support with some staples because I ran out of contact cement. I installed the 3D printed lever surrounds using pocket hole screws so they could look more in universe. And then I cut the liner from underneath in between the holes to allow the levers to fit through and also to cover the edges of the wood. I've been practicing a little bit with Fusion 360 so I designed these simple or basic swivel bases for the levers. I used dowels for the levers. I drilled some holes, cut them to size, the lanes that I thought that worked for me and put them in the swivel bases. These I can glue in, right? But if I ever need to change this out because something breaks, 
then it's easier to just make a hole and put a screw in like a tiny screw like that that gives it a little bit of pressure so it won't come out but let's do a hole and just screw this in there I started marking where the lever box for the light speed would go. I used a piece of wood to support the lever box and then after it was in place I marked where every lever base would go and installed them. This lever was too loose, so I tightened them all and they all stayed in place. Then I started gluing down some greeblies. For this, I used E6000. So I have a bunch of these switches, toggle switches, I have a bunch of these push buttons, square or rectangular ones, and this is the base for round, large push buttons that also light up the same as these. So I'm going to use these to mark where all the other pieces go in the cockpit dash. So I'm just going to mark them for now, then I have to take it out to drill all the holes and connect everything. So back here I put in a, an old iPad that I have, the screen is broken in the corner and I recorded some footage when I went to Galaxy's Edge and some graphics that I found online and I have them in here and I edit it. There you go, just had to hit play, I put Velcro around here. I use some PVC panel scraps to make the panels for the cockpit just to give it a more dimension and it doesn't look so flat. I use the measurements of the grease pencil marks that I had made before. I had to take some of these greeblies out to put it back on the panel. I cleaned out the dashboard with naphtha to erase all the grease pencil markings. And now it's time to paint and finish all the details. So now that I have the levers here, I'm going to paint some details in red and yellow. And it'll be inside right there in each one. There they go, just a little detail, it's not perfect. The prints are not great either, but yeah. And now to install everything, panels, more greeblies, and levers. I created some static switch panels on Fusion 360, so I printed these out, painted them, and then glued in static switches, also 3D printed.
I'm gonna be doing this one. There's two big holes here for two big buttons and there's square tiles here. Now on this second panel, I glued on that piece that I had glued onto the dashboard and then taken off. So basically what I've done is I put a lamp base there on this wooden base that I glued onto the piece of wood. And that way I can screw in the bulb with the effects and then put the top portion on it. So I'm going to use this aluminum wire, it's used to hold down cyclone fence. Just put them in here, just cut a couple of pieces down and just put them in there and glue them in. So I made some holes for switches and one of these switches are connected to the blue effects light bulb. Okay, it's plugged in. Let's hope this switch works. There you go. So it's plugged in here for now, but this is gonna be through the back. Put it in here, just like that. I'm gonna put two knobs here to make it easier to pull. I might do something here, maybe a greedy or something. It's all connected. The first switch is the one that turns it on. Turn it off, you turn it on again, it has a different function. This one's completely on. Do it once again, then it has this movement type of thing. Little by little. And it has that one. So these things here are spacers from when you're gonna mount uh, a rack on the back of the TV. And I saved them all because these can be used for many things. So I'm gonna use like a medium sized one and I'm gonna put a screw through it so I can, since this is loose, I don't have to pull from here to put it on and take it off. I'm gonna put them in each corner so it looks like it's functional. And also it gives me a place to grab this panel. So let's just screw them in. So I'm gonna just put the panels that go here. There are these two. And these, I'm gonna level them out and just stick them together with some E6000. After they're dry and everything, I can use these holes by itself just to drill the holes all the way through so we can put in all the lights and the buttons that we need to put in. So yeah, this one's kind of already stuck there. Hold it for a bit, do the other one. Another thing that I can start doing is, is putting these switch plates here. So yeah, these also I'm gonna glue with um, E6000. So yeah, let's just put these on there. Next time you see it, all the buttons will be in there. I have this edge that's unfinished. I haven't painted it or anything. So what I'm gonna use there are half towels, EVA foam half towels. I'm just gonna glue them on here in the front and that'll give us a nice finish right there. And now as you can see, there's still a little bit of the edge that you can see here. I'm gonna paint over this 
and paint these little pieces of wood so it all blends in. So when we open it, we don't see this. Yeah, so I cut out this little shelf, put a leg there, and some small L brackets here, and this is gonna go above the Millennium Falcon dashboard. Painted it black, looks grayish, but it's black. And this is gonna hold the speaker in this area around here somewhere. So then the dashboard or the cockpit is gonna fit under here. So before I put the shelf in this one, all these cables that I have here, I'll use some of this wire conduit and just wrap them in there so they look more in universe. So, gotta get a level. Let's see if I measure correctly and this fits in here. Oh yeah. Great. Looking pretty good. Still more details to come. Put in pinstriping, more LEDs, more stuff, greeblies, then aging or weathering. And um, yeah, but I guess that, that'll be another time. This is taking more time than I thought. But it's gonna be fun though. After it's all done, it's gonna look great. I'm gonna use two more to make it easier to lift this. I'm gonna put one here, one all the way down here. Maybe later on I'll put one in the middle, but I think with these two will be enough so I can grab and pull. So let's just put these in. I pulled out some of my small Greebly bins to see what Greeblies I had that might work all around the cockpit. I painted some of these Greeblies, getting them ready for the installation. I cut some small strips of PVC, painted them, marked them, and drilled some holes for some LEDs. I installed more switches, some round, some rectangular, and I cut out some holes for these and a big rectangular rocker switch. I then glued down these PVC strips and used them as guides to drill the holes all the way through. I wasn't completely happy how it looked so I will have to fix this or change it later on. So if you notice the lead didn't stick out of the PVC panel because this is a half an inch um, wood panel and then you have like an eighth here so it's, it's a little bit short. So what I'm going to do is with a bigger bit like this just gonna open up the back portion of it so the lead can stick out a little bit towards the front it's not looking too pretty but it's gonna work i'll sand it a bit down and just thing is that the lead goes a little bit more in let's do that to all of these and the ones on the other side now that i stuck all of them in put some hot glue so it doesn't come out and these i'm going to cover with a little bit of black tape and just secure them here somewhere. I 
these are connections for a speaker box and I'm using them to add more detail to the dashboard. I wanted more rectangular switches, so I drilled some more holes and installed them. These greeblies were made by pouring some casting resin into some blister packs that I had saved because I found the shape of them interesting. So I'm going to use a hard drive motor, put a skinny screw right through it, I'm going to mark it here, then just drill a tinier hole so this could go in tight. So. I'm going to put it around here because I might use either this one. I might use either this one or that one just to put it like around here somewhere. I think that'll be the place right there. Just mark it in there. There's a little hole. Tiny there. And it still spins. So I think I'm going to use either this one. This one does not spin, but for this, I'm going to have to make a hole there. I think it does look nice. So I'm going to mark this one because the other option is this one and it also spins. It could be good so we can play with it. I think I kind of like the clean look of just three different circles here. I put this one in here. I'm going to mark it. That mark. Look for a bit and just make a hole. Eat up a little bit of that PVC. I think that'll be good enough. Let me see. Yep. Put a little bit of glue in there. There we go. I decided to just drill more holes for more LEDs. And also I'm going to use these colored Christmas lights and alternate them to make it look more interesting. So I pulled out some random LEDs from the strip. Some were really glued on. And I'm going to use these assorted colored LED string lights that have eight functions so that way I can pick and alternate the movement of the flashes. I had to take off the plastic balloon looking covers to expose the LEDs. I then picked out colors and placed them where I had removed the white LEDs. These acrylic square holders were designed by Dave from Whitey's Wicked Workshop. I 3D printed some, used them to mark the holes for the LEDs, drilled and installed them, and used a grease pencil to mark them, and used it also as a spacer. And even though I marked them, measured, and did all I could, came out crooked. Okay, so I have this um, 24 2 gauge cable. I'm going to use this to connect all the switches and all the buttons. For now, it's just going to be uh, for lighting. But later on, yeah, I'm planning in the future just getting some soundboards and stuff like that and have um, some of these buttons do stuff. There are still some buttons that are going to turn on and turn off some of the, uh, the lights and other features, but that'll be done later on. So. Now let's just connect them. I'm gonna connect them, just strip them and connect them. And then later on, I'm gonna solder them. So if you see me just connecting them all, it's just, just make sure it's working. And then later on, I'll come in with a soldering iron and just secure that all in. Something I'm gonna do while I'm wiring, I'm gonna use a nine volt battery to just check the polarity of all the switches, all the buttons. I think they turn on either way, but you know, most of the time LEDs are just work in one direction. So that's why there's a positive and a negative, and this is what I'm gonna to use to test them one by one, make sure it's all the right polarity. Yeah, so I think this cable that I bought is too thin, it's 24, I don't know if, I had 18, but I think it was too thick. I'm gonna to have to use the 18-2 that I have because this one, it's just breaking off too easily and it's going to break off the connections and I want something to be pretty permanent. 
So I tried soldering it first. It still snaps off because it's so thin. It has just a little bit of um, copper in there and it's just snapping off. So I'm gonna use 18-2, even though I consider it to be too thick. Uh, that's what I have on hand. I ordered this one, 100 feet of it. <laughs> and maybe I should have ordered um, 22. I don't know. Well, it is what it is. So let's just get on with it and maybe I can use this cable for something else. So I don't know if you guys know this, but this is a little trick that I use when I gotta hang stuff that has like these type of holes. Just use some masking tape, put it on top. I just mark the top of the holes. You can make a, a hole. Either way, you can mark them or just make a hole. And this is gonna be the template. This is the top. I can mark, even mark the top if we need to. It's gonna be the template so we can put in the screws to hold this in. So now, I don't know, we can't really see it that clear, but put it inside where we want it. And all we have to do is put screws in those marks. There are four screws, two on the top, two on the bottom. All we have to do is like, take the tape off and put in the multi-plug. Let me see if I can film this while I'm trying to put it in. It's a little uncomfortable. I don't know how precise I got it, but kind of square it up. Right. Yeah, it's hard to do it with one hand, but it's it's in there. There it is. There it is. Yeah. There you go. Great. So this cable goes all the way to the outlet on the wall. And I have this um, controller here where I can plug in the multi-plug. And this activates either by pressing here or by an app like Google or Siri or something like that. So put this in here. I'm gonna secure the cable later. And now I can plug in everything at the top and have it work off the multi-plug. There you have it. I use Velcro ties to secure everything. It's all plugged in. And now for some pinstriping. I think this kind of completes the look or the Star Wars feel. On these 3D printed switch panels, I use some sprayed clear, brush it over the pinstriping to help it seal and stick it down. The pinstriping on the lever panels didn't stick at all. So I took them off and decided to try painting them on. So I marked them and with paint marker, made the lines. Came out pretty good. I did the same in other parts where the surface was the drawer liner. I wanted to put some access to USB sockets so that way I can charge my phone or other devices so I bought a double USB socket from Temu and installed it here on this panel. I used tape so the paint wouldn't be damaged and also so I can see the marks better. I also used the tape to get a better shape for the hole covering the back portion of the USB sockets. So I cut the hole, installed the sockets, and connected it to a 12 volt power plug. and more pinstriping was done to complete this panel. I made a final panel for the left corner of my dashboard with a piece of PVC, making holes for some LEDs and then gluing on some colored acrylic domes over the LEDs and a painted greebly that came from a small propane tank. After all this is done, let's give it some character with some weathering. 
I use water soluble oil paints, makeup brushes, and some window cleaner. And uh, well, just went to town, applying and wiping, diffusing, and overall getting dirty. And even the foam panels got dirty. And after that, let's see how it all turned out. 